Hello, Grandma, by Robert E. Constant. My parents have always told Robbie and I to be proud of where you come from and to cherish our Caribbean heritage and customs that have been passed on to us from our families in Antigua, the Bahamas, and Belize. We have lots of family in the Caribbean, including my grandmother, who lives on the island of Nassau, Bahamas. We can't visit her often because she is 3,000 miles away. But we stay in touch using technology such as FaceTime or WhatsApp. Just about every year, we see her during the summer and can't wait to hug her and shout, Hello, Grandma! Visiting the Bahamas during the summer is so much fun because we get to see family, go to the beach, eat native fruits and seafood, and enjoy the roots and culture of rake and scrape and Junkanoo music. We even get to practice our bohemian accents and slang like, Hey, bae, which means hello, or my dad's favorite, Well, mother sick, a popular phrase to express super excitement. We've been waiting since last summer to see grandma, and we're finally on our way to Newark, International Airport. We have a non-stop flight from Newark, New Jersey, directly to Nassau, Bahamas. The best thing about flying is looking out of the window and seeing the pretty colors of the Atlantic Ocean go from dark blue to bluish green to aqua blue and light blue. Even NASA astronauts in space have taken selfies of the 700 islands of the Bahamas and their beautiful waters. When we arrive in Nassau, Grandma meets us outside and we hop in her car. She takes us on the West Bay Street so that we can take in the refreshing scent of the ocean breeze coming right off the sea. After a long flight, we are hungry, so Grandma takes us to one of my parents' favorite places on the island, Bamboo Shack. We enjoy our conch snacks and goombe punch sodas while catching up with Grandma on our schooling and after-school activities. When we get to Grandma's house, we spend the rest of the day helping her pick some of the fruits from her yard, such as bananas, guineps, sapodillas, coconuts, juju, mango, tamarind, scarlet plums, noni fruit, soursop, and sea grapes. They're loaded with vitamins and minerals that help keep our bodies healthy. Sometimes the leaves from the fruits and vegetables on the island can be used for medicine and home remedies, as well as making homemade tea. In the early 1900s, my great-great-grandmother and her family used sea grape leaves for plates while eating at the beach. Talk about being environmentally friendly. Today, we are grateful for the Bahamas National Trust for continuing that legacy of conserving 
and protecting the very best of the Bahamas. Soursop is a fruit with a sour citrus flavor. Uncle Donnie uses it to make homemade ice cream the old fashioned way. We help gather the soursop, heavy cream, evaporated milk, and vanilla extract to mix into the hand cranked ice cream maker. After adding rock salt and ice to the outside of the container, we turn the handle around and around until the cream hardens and is ready to be served. It's the perfect dessert after dinner. Ara ara. When we go to sleep, Robbie and I can't help but hear a chorus of frogs serenading the neighborhood with their croaking songs. You may even hear the bark of the neighborhood pot cakes in the distance. Going to sleep in the Caribbean is unique because some animals come alive when the sun goes down and you never know what new sound you may hear each night. Grandma wakes us up early, and while I brush my teeth, I can smell the aroma of chicken souse in the air. The combination of eating warm chicken souse and Johnny cake for breakfast is the best way to start our day. The whole family packs a bag, and we put on our bathing suits for a day trip to Rose Island. Rhode Island is located just east of Nassau. We often go just to swim and hang out for the day. When we head out on the boat, Robbie and I sit near the bow to help navigate the coral reefs ahead. Wow, look how big those stingrays are. They are so large that they look like they are flying in the water. There is so much marine life that it is hard to keep count of how many fish we see. So far, we've already seen colorful jacks, grunts, parrotfish, angelfish, sergeant majors, and even some clownfish, just like in Finding Nemo. Have you ever seen pigs swim? Well, you will if you are in the Bahamas. These pigs are great swimmers and have become a tourist attraction in recent years. On the beach, Robbie and I gather dry wood, branches, bark, and dry leaves to start a fire while my dad and uncles bring the red snapper, grouper, crawfish, and conch they caught. Once we cut, clean, and season the seafood, we place it on the grill to cook. While the food is cooking, my aunt teaches us how to make fresh conch salad by cutting the conch, onions, green peppers, tomatoes, pepper, salt, lime, and mixing it into a bowl. We love the explosion of citrus and tangy flavors of conch salad. The next day, we were in for a real treat. Grandma drives us on the Sir Sidney Poitier Bridge to Paradise Island to enjoy a day on the water slides at the Atlantis Water Park. We slip and slide our way through the water tubes and finish the ride with a big splash in the end. This water park is especially amazing because you can slide through the tubes while watching sharks swim overhead. Before we go home, we make a quick stop at Potter's K 
under the bridge and order some crab and rice, coleslaw, grouper fingers, and an ice cold refreshing cup of Switcha. You know it as lemonade, but in the Bahamas, we use fresh limes. Although Robbie and I are not in school during the summer, we do our best to keep up with our reading goals. Grandma takes us to the University of the Bahamas for the annual summer book festival to buy books to add to our home library. We are always excited to see the children's book, Hey Tuskegee There. After leaving the book fair, we plead with grandma to take us to the Jaws Beach for a late afternoon swim and to collect as many seashells as we can. One of the things I enjoy most about the Bahamas is the annual Junkanoo Summer Event. It blends art, culture, and live Junkanoo music in the streets of Nassau. Participants wear colorful costumes and play instruments like goatskin drums, cowbells, horns, and whistles to create a sound found nowhere else in the world. Uncle Roy helps us to make our own costumes using prep paper, glue, paint, and cardboard. Junkanoo is more than a festival. It's an expression of the native culture that connects us to Africa. After church on Sunday, Grandma takes us to a bazaar benefiting St. George's Church where our great-great-grandmother Maud Johnson was a founding member. The entire community comes out to play hoopla, eat great food, and support the church at the same time. What is hoopla? It's a really fun game where you get to toss a ring on a set of items placed on the table. If your ring falls on an item, you win. I won a teddy bear and Robbie won a miniature super soaker and a deck of UNO cards. We both had a great time as we ate enough conch fritters and cherry snowballs to last until next summer. Well, we have come to the saddest part of the trip, the part where we have to say goodbye to grandma, our family, and this beautiful paradise. It was so much fun, but it's time to go back home. I cannot wait until we come back here to do it all over again. WhatsApp and phone calls are great, but nothing beats being able to hug and say, hello, grandma, in person. Excellent job, readers. The end. And as always, please remember to subscribe. Thank you. <laughs>